Well, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm so grateful that you're here. And if you're returning, I'm thankful for you returning. And um, today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite perennials in my garden. And I know I say that about everything, but I really, really mean it this time. This is Midnight Masquerade Pinstamen. I don't know if you can see the foliage behind me, but it is now out of bloom. So I will put some video on the camera that you can see what it looks like in full bloom. And I'm at the point where I am wanting to separate it because it is giving off lots of little babies down here. And I have a perennial garden that I am planting up front that you may have started watching that video, but I would like to have some of this in that perennial garden. I'm also amazed that I don't see it in more people's gardens just because it is such an amazing performer. And my Lucy's just sitting here staring at me. <laughs> How am I supposed to get anything done? Seriously, back up. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for joining me and let's go ahead and get talking about this beautiful, beautiful perennial. Well, there are so many pinstamens out there. There are just so many varieties to choose from. And so, but today I'm talking specifically about this variety, which is going to be Midnight Masquerade. It is hardy in zones three through eight. It likes well-drained, pretty average soil. They like full sun. And in my area, they bloom in kind of uh, mid to late spring. And my blooms usually typically last two to three weeks. It just kind of depends on the conditions. Here at Den Flower is good. We got a lot of rain. So the blooms just did not last as long as they have in the past. Once they are established, they are drought tolerant. And so they can deal with this difficult, hot summers that we have here in North Texas. The leaves will brown up some, but it still has a beautiful interest for this, for, you know, for the hot summers that we get. And the blooms are the most beautiful, like pinkish lavender colors, um, has like a creamy center to it and just so unique and such a beautiful contrast to everything else going on right now in my garden. And the foliage is a showstopper itself, even without the blooms. It's a beautiful dark, dark green with purple veining throughout. Sometimes the foliage takes on a burgundy-ish um, color. They get as tall as 36 to 40 inches high. So, you know, I have that height right here in the front of my bed and I like that. I think it looks fantastic. I have it next to a spreading juniper here and the contrast between the two is gorgeous. So, so I do fertilize in the spring. I use plant tone, Espona's plant tone. After it blooms, it has the most beautiful seed heads that give such a spectacular show on their own. And so it's one of those that you can leave in the garden and enjoy the uniqueness of that seed head, or you can deadhead it. I think Pinstamen's one of those really easy plants to grow. It does well in a variety of conditions. So um, if you haven't tried it, you ought to give it a shot. And it's just easy maintenance. There's not a lot to do for it. You don't even have to deadhead it. I'm just telling you my experience with it. So if you um, do decide to deadhead it, it may, reflush and bloom for you. I have not had that happen here. It typically gets really hot uh, quickly in my area. Um, I'm in zone 8B in North Texas, so we don't typically get a second bloom, but if you're in a cooler area, you may get that second bloom if you're lucky. Um, but what it will do is it'll often just kind of flush out some new foliage for me, which is just fine. It just gives my, um, this area of my garden just more interest and I am happy with that. In my experience, I grew it for seed last year, and that was the first year I had done that. And I had been deadheading it previous years, and it flowered beautifully for me afterwards. The year that I let it go to seed, I did not have as spectacular of uh, flowering this year. So I think it might have something to do with letting my plant go to seeds and you know, that's all I can explain it. We, we did get a lot of rain this year, so it could have also been because of all the rain. So um, the rain also did affect the color of my foliage. Last year, it was a very, very beautiful dark purple. This year, it's definitely more on the green side. 
and it does look like it has a little bit of um, chlorosis going on. So um, yeah, I'm kind of fighting a rain battle here, but I'm not gonna argue with the rain, right? It's a good thing, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you how to cut those seed pods off and also show you how we're gonna dig up some of these little babies and um, we're gonna get those moved to the front, so. So obviously if you deadhead, you're gonna wanna decide about height with a plant like this. So you can decide if you want a variety of heights, it'll look more natural, or you can just cut it all around the same height. What you do is you take the stem and just follow it down. So I would like to just go down to about this height and I'm gonna cut there. And then there's your seed pod, okay? So you can see the seeds in there. So here's your seed pod guys, and the seeds you can see are right here on the tip. So you would leave this on the plant until it turns black and crispy. Um, right now they're too, e too early to harvest, but after having done both, um, harvesting the seeds and just dividing the plant, I would recommend just dividing it. You can get a larger plant um, by dividing it than by starting by seed. So unless you want just a huge bulk of them at one time, I would just recommend dividing it. Once it's dried up, you would pop this out and it's filled with lots and lots and lots of seeds. I'm hoping to have a better show next year. So I'm gonna keep trimming. I want it all to be about the same height. So again, I'm just gonna follow the stem down and I'm gonna clip right above the two leaves. So it is also a pollinator magnet, you guys. The hummingbirds love it, bees love it, and pretty much pollinators, this is where they wanna hang out. So there's just really not that many problems. As far as pest and disease, um, this one, because of where I have it in my garden, it does get overhead watering and it actually is doing fine. I have not yet switched this area to drip back here, but I know that, um, this rain has affected it because I've never had a disease problem before or a problem at all, but it does look like it has spider mites this year. So, but they, spider mites look like they're out of control in my entire garden this year. And I do blame the rain. I think it has caused a lot more problems earlier on in this season than that has happened in the past. So, but altogether, one of the lowest maintenance plants in my garden. All right. So this is what it looks like after trimming. Uh, it just kind of looks like a nice mound of darker foliage. But while I'm here, I'll just show you this white swan. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh my goodness. So I grew this from seed and they are just I don't know guys, there's a lot of benefits to growing from seeds. And one of them is just, I think you just have healthier plants. So, all right. So I have two midnight masquerades in my greenhouse and I would like to pull them out, but here's the little babies right here that I would like to dig up in addition to what's in my greenhouse. So I was able to, I think I, sowed six seeds and I was able to germinate or three of them germinated and then I lost one a couple of weeks ago so all right so I have it zoomed in so you all can see and you know as I was talking I was thinking about when I say cool it's all relative because again I am in North Texas so cool to me means 90 degrees so keep that in mind when I say cooler temperatures. All right, so look at that, how beautiful. Look at the perfect little round mound. Beautiful roots too. And this looks like another little baby attached. So I'm gonna take several of these. I'm just gonna dig them up. And I think I'm gonna take one that is, um, 
Okay, I don't want to take that one. I'll just take those two. Let's go over here for my echinacea. I have to laugh because I just encountered some chicken wire that I had put in my garden eons ago. Can you guys see this? This was to keep moles out. When I first planted this penstemon, I actually thought this would work. It never dawned on me that the mole could go underneath that and come up. So anyways, I forgot that was all in there. How funny. I'm gonna trim these back a little bit more so that you can see the babies underneath. See that? There's lots of snails and stuff in there. I really did not clean out under here like I should have. But do you see all those little babies? So I think I'm just gonna take this one right here and maybe, no, that one's gonna be too hard. Maybe just this one. Okay, so easy, so easy. So let me know if you have a pinstemon that you really love in your garden. Uh, I have another variety called Rock Candy, and I like it okay. I'm actually not sure if I'm gonna hang on to it. This, the flowers are beautiful, but the stalks just aren't strong enough, so they just tend to fall to the ground, and it, I wind up just having to clip them. So I don't know. I wouldn't mind finding a, another variety that somebody loves. So. Y'all just let me know in the comments if there's one that you really um, recommend. As always, I have my biotone and my earthworm castings. I really want this to be a good start for these. And get these roots going in a short period of time. They may be happy over here. Like I said, they got overhead watering and not other bed so they may be happy over here that they are not going to have to deal with that but i don't know you guys i put this perennial bed in and i'm already ready for more space does that happen to y'all oh my goodness oh well Is gonna be it so I'm gonna get them watered I am giving them lots and lots of water I think I actually have space for one more, so I think I'll dig up another one and get it in here. All right, they don't look like much now, but again, fingers are crossed and I'm hoping I can get them established before the terrible summer heat comes. And here's a little sneak peek. I hope you'll tune in to the final show so I can show you what all we have planted up in there. As always guys, thank you for joining me and don't forget if you like this video, press that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I want you to make sure you stay tuned so that you can see this final perennial bed that we have going on. It is absolutely gorgeous. So, alrighty, you guys have a great day, bye.